بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters The Echoes of Enlightenment is a theme chosen for this beautiful tour of Kenya the first of the lectures being this one in the Jamia Masjid which is the biggest masjid alhamdulillah with the most beautiful faces and most handsome youngsters looking at me right now when I see the smile I don't know if the light is coming from there or from the teeth nonetheless there is enlightenment that we receive in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you would like enlightenment in your life please connect to the house of Allah Rajulun qalbuhu mu'allakum bil masajidi one of the seven who will be granted the shade on the day of qiyamah is a person whose heart is connected to the house of Allah it will help you you will have good habits you will eradicate your bad habits you won't have the time to commit immorality and evil you will be conscious of Allah you will be repenting to Allah imagine the enlightenment you are achieving just by connecting to the house of Allah and if you are a distance from the house of Allah or if you are a female for whom it is not an obligation to come to the house of Allah you will achieve a similar reward by connecting with Salah. One Salah to the next Salah, to the next Salah, the concern of it is a huge enlightenment. But I would like to tell you that from the very beginning, the creation of Adam, alayhi salam, Allah would never ever leave man without enlightening him. The echoes of that enlightenment come up to today and shall continue right up to the day of Qiyamah. What does Allah want from you and I? What is the most powerful statement? It has to be a statement of enlightenment that every prophet was asked to repeat. If there is something that every single prophet was asked to say to his people, I need to know it. Imagine, who gave the statement? It is Allah, His word. So there has to be something when He says, we will send you prophet after prophet with some message. Allah says in the Quran, Whenever guidance comes to you from me, Allah says. So whoever will follow that guidance, two things I guarantee for that person. No fear upon that person and they will not be sad. Not be sad in this world and not be sad in the hereafter. In other words, they will achieve contentment. This means if I follow the guidance of Allah, the enlightenment, I will always be content no matter what happens in my life. When I get something, Alhamdulillah. When I lose something, Alhamdulillah. When I am elevated, Alhamdulillah. I'm not arrogant. When I'm dropped, Alhamdulillah, I'm not depressed. I will adjust because Allah Almighty is in control. So what is it? What is this Huda? Let's go back to the same Quran. And we believe in the Quran. 114 surahs from Surah Al-Fatiha right to Surah Al-Nas. All of them. We believe in them. We adopt them. We understand them. We will memorize them. When we are connected to them, we will achieve the greatest closeness to Allah Almighty. Khayrukum man ta'allama al-Quran wa allamahu. The best from amongst you are those who learn the Quran and teach it anything and everything connected to the Quran you need to be involved may Allah Almighty grant us ease so Allah says وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِن قَبْلِكَ مِن رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاعْبُدُونَ 
That is the enlightenment. We have never sent a messenger before you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, except that we instructed him something. To tell his people, La ilaha illa ana fa'buduni. Allah says, I told them to tell their people, there is none worthy of worship besides me, so worship me, which means worship Allah. So Allah wants us to worship him alone, that's all. That is the core enlightenment. That is the message that every single prophet brought. Adam alayhi salam, he had children. Some narrations say he had 40 children. And some narrations take it a little bit this way, that way. But the most correct from what we have learned from Ibn Kathir in Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya, where he says, Hawa alayhi salam gave birth 20 times. Each time there was a male and a female, twins. And the law at the time was very different from what it is now. You, we have today something called a mahram. A mahram is a person very closely related to you, whom you are not allowed to marry. Closely related. Your child, right? Your grandchild, your sibling, your uncle and aunt. You can't marry them. Too close. At that time, there was permissibility to marry someone born from another womb. Another gestation period, but not with you. So whoever was born with you, say you are the twin. So you, they're two, boy and girl. The two of you cannot marry, but someone born separately, they, the one from here would be allowed to marry one from here. That was at the beginning. If you sit and you think about how it is, it's just unique. It's from Allah. Nonetheless, Adam alayhi salam warned his own children about worshipping Allah alone. Sheath alayhi salam who came thereafter warned his people and his cousins to worship Allah alone. Nuh alayhi salam spent 950 years. What was he telling his people? He says, worship Allah alone. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فَقَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرُهُ Allahu Akbar. We sent Nuh to his people, Noah. What did he say? Oh my people, don't worship anyone besides Allah. You don't have a Lord besides your Maker. You can only worship the one who made you. That's it. What about the others? Let's all of them, Allah says, they all told their people one by one, "Ubudu Allah ma lakum min ilahin ghayruhu, afala tattaqun, afala taqilun." The Quran has so many verses. Worship Allah, the one who made you. That's why, as a Muslim, what is unique about Islam? What is this beautiful enlightenment that is drawing people closer and closer towards the Deen of Allah and letting them come in droves the Deen of Allah? It is the connection that you and I are taught to have between you and the one who made you. Allah says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. In the first surah of the Quran and the first verse, those who say Bismillah is a verse, they will say it's the second verse. But it's the first verse besides the Bismillah. Even if you look at the Bismillah, you have Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. You have in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, the most merciful in a all encompassing way and the most merciful in a specialized way. But when you say Alhamdulillahi Rabbi Al Alameen, Rabb is referring to the one in absolute control of everything in existence. Rabbun. He created you. He feeds you, he gives you drink, he sustains you, he cherishes you, he provides for you, he cures you when you are ill, and he has absolute control of everything. All of this together is Rabbun. So when I say all praise is due to Rabbun, it is definitely due to Rabbun. It's common logic. All praise can only be due to some deity who made me. That's it. It cannot be due in a holistic way to anyone or anything else. When I'm praising you as a human, Wallahi, I'm only praising some certain aspect between you and I. But when there is Alhamdu, 
all praise wallahi it's only for the one who made me and made you that's it all praise is only for allah lillah and why 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 does he deserve two things i want to talk about quickly why does he deserve to be praised why he well because he made me because he's in control because he provides for me I am here on earth and every human and every creature is on earth not because they wanted to be here. Not a single creature is here by their choice. You, as big as you might be, as wealthy as you might be, as powerful as you might be, Wallahi, you did not have a choice to come on earth. You were put here by someone. Don't lie. Who from amongst you is here? Because they wanted to come here. Not one. Which animal is here because it wanted to be here? No, not even one. Who put you here? Whoever put me here, Alhamdu, is for him. All praise is for him alone. Allah, he put me here. And bigger than him putting you here is the fact that he is going to take you back without your choice. Wallahi. He put you here. And now you found yourself here. You have no option, O oh son of Adam. You have no option but to worship him. Don't lie to yourself that you have an option. Because you, your very existence was without an option. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. You see? Your existence was without an option. Your departure shall also be without an option. Look, as you grow old, Allah says, Awalam nu'ammirkum. مَا يَتَذَكَّرُ فِيهِ مَنْ تَذَكَّرُ وَجَاءَكُمُ النَّذِيرُ Those who lost their way, they will be asked, Did we not give you life enough? Was your life not long enough? For the one who wanted to take heed, to take heed. Didn't we give you so many examples in your life that you need to come to us? You need to worship us. You need to change your life. You need to start doing the right things. And you know what they are. You need to start coming closer to us. Did we not give you enough life? And did the warner not come to you? So who is the warner? Ultimately, the warner, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a warner. Allah says, Right? Allah sent him as a witness, as a bearer of good news. And Allah says, Allah sent him as a warner too. Calling towards Allah by his permission and a shining bright light, subhanallah. And to give good news to the believers that Allah has prepared for you something amazing. So the warner, he came to warn you, to remind you, please worship Allah alone. I told you, that is the biggest enlightenment and the echo of it is loud and it will continue forever. Worship Allah alone. Worship your maker alone. He's the only one worthy of worship. Worship the one whom you are going to return to. I remember speaking to a group of people who were non-Muslim who were asking me, tell us about worship. You always say concept of Godhood in Islam is powerful. What about it? So I said, do you know if I were to say, Oh, you who made me, you are the greatest. Do you agree? They said, yes. Oh, you who is going to take me away the day you take me away, have mercy on me. Do you agree? They said, yes. Oh, you whom I'm going to return to, when I return to you, give me goodness. Do you agree? They said, yes. Oh, you who is in absolute control of entire existence, you are the greatest. I worship you alone. Do you agree? They were quiet for a while. I said, come on. Do you not agree that the one who deserves my worship, I put my head on the ground. Imagine putting your head on the ground. Putting your head no matter who you are, on the floor, only for the one who is in control of entire creation. Wallahi, I will do it only for him. Only for him. No one else. I promised you, they had to agree to say yes, only for him. So who is he? He's the worshipped one. Al-Ma'loo. 
So who is the worshipped one? He calls himself Allah in Hebrew, Elohim, Eloha. You find the Jewish people, the concept of Godhood, they also believe in one God, one, the maker, alone. Elohim, Eloha. In Arabic, it's Allah, the name he chose for himself. But the concept of Tawheed in Islam is the most powerful concept because Islam tells you, hold it so close to you and be very, very protective over it because that is the biggest echo and it is the biggest enlightenment. Everything else will come around it, but itself needs to be there intact. May Allah grant us the sweetness of worshipping Him alone. My brothers, my sisters, the term nadir in that verse where Allah says, did the warner not come to you? Do you know what it includes? In the books of tafsir, it includes your age. When I'm young, nothing is paining. I'm running around like this, like that. If I get hurt in one day, it's already better. When you are small, little, if they do a procedure, in a few days you're already running around and you are okay. When you grow a little bit older, what happens? Your bones begin to ache. Allah says, An-Nadir. Your hair becomes gray. Your back begins to cave in a little bit. You need a stick. It's normal. It's okay. Allah loves you. If all of those things brought you closer to Allah, good news to you, you will go to Jannatul Firdaus. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا حَسُنَتْ مُسْتَقَرًّا وَمُقَامًا Allah says you will be there forever and ever. What a beautiful place. Allah prepared for you. Don't be ashamed. Don't be sad. لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ No fear. No sadness at all. No need. Why? Did you not try? Did you do tawbah? Did you ask Allah forgiveness? Yes, you are in a good place, inshallah. You asked Allah forgiveness, you are in a good place. Someone came to me one day, an elderly man, and it's a true story. He said, you know what? I am old. I'm losing hope. Shaitan keeps coming to me to tell me Allah did not forgive you. I heard you say that don't allow Shaitan to come and make you think you are not forgiven because that's one of the traps of Allah. Sometimes to think Allah did not forgive you is worse than the sin you committed. Because now you are doubting one of the names and qualities of Allah, which is worse. If someone committed adultery, it's a major sin. Someone was drinking alcohol, intoxicants, drugs, gambling, whatever. You know the list of major sins. If someone did those, they are major sins. But they know Allah... I will ask him forgiveness, so I am asking him. He is Rahmanun Rahimun. He says, La taqnatu. Do not lose hope. Fi rawah, fi rahmatillahi. In the mercy of Allah. La taqnatu min rahmatillahi. Inna Allah yaghfiru al-dhunuba jami'an. So if they lost hope, what are they doing? They are insulting Allah. Don't lose hope. So the uncle tells me, tell me something. That will calm my heart. I told him, uncle, the fact that you asked Allah's forgiveness, he has wiped that sin. When we repeat, oh Allah, forgive me, it's only because we are more embarrassed, not because we are doubting Allah's mercy. When you repeat, oh Allah, forgive me, forgive me, what I did was bad. He elevates your status higher, but the sin was wiped out the first time that you sought the forgiveness of Allah. This is what we are taught. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Adam alayhi salam came in and wallahi his entire existence was a lesson on those lines. Let me prove it to you. When he was made, he was not born. He was created. Adam alayhi salam, the only creature, the only human being, should I say, the only human being, he was made. Allah blew the soul in him and he came to life in a certain way. But he was already tall, big. And Allah says, Allama Adam al -asma akullaha. We taught him the names of everything. So when he opened his eyes, he already knew everything. Today they say technology is advanced. One brother told me a day will come, they will put a chip in your ear when you are born and you will start talking. I said, no, 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 no. It can't be that far. That's a little bit much. They said, don't, don't misjudge and misunderstand. It can happen. 
they now have chips inside to read your mind. Do you know that? May Allah forgive us. I still tell them, no, you can't read my mind, not mine. They say we have a lie detector. I said, Wallahi, these lie detectors, they are liars. May Allah grant us ease. The point I am raising is when Adam alayhi salam was created by Allah. Allah created him where? Where was he? Where was he? A place known as the garden. The garden, Jannah. A place known as Jannah. The scholars have spoken about which Jannah it was. I'm not going to go into the debate. We call it Jannatul Ibtila. It was a certain Jannah, a certain paradise that Allah made for him to do what he wanted to do. Because the Jannatul Khuld and the Jannah that is everlasting that we are going to go in, there was nothing haram in it at all. But this particular place, Allah made one thing haram. Allah told him, Adam, you and your spouse, Hawa, Hawa came after a certain time. Allah says, you know what? Fakula minha ragadan haithu shi'tuma. Eat what you want. Do what you like. This is Jannah. Enjoy. Allah says. Wala taqraba hadihi shajara. Just one thing don't do. This tree, don't go close to it. That's all. What did he do? What did he do? The exact thing Allah told him not to do, he did it. La ilaha illallah. Have you ever thought of that? Who was this? My grandfather. Your grandfather. What did he do? Allah spoke to him and told him, Adam, enjoy. Only this tree, don't go near. There were millions of other things to do, but he went to the tree and he ate from it. Do you not realize that Allah wanted to teach us a lesson? Oh man, you are a human. You might falter, but regret it. The sign that you regret or the, the fact that you regret your sin is a sign that you fear Allah, you are conscious of Him, you are worried about your relation with Allah. And as you grow older, you realize I have no option but to make peace with Allah because I know I'm going to go back. I cannot remain here forever. You realize it. I met a brother long back. He became a Muslim, but at one stage he was atheistic. He said, no, 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 you, you guys... You are very bad. And I said, why? He said, because you doom people to hell. You say you will enter hell. I said, what about you? He said, I'm atheist. I don't believe. So why are you worried? Good question. If you don't believe in heaven and hell, you do believe in it because you are worried about it. But you are lying to yourself. I don't believe. If you don't believe, you won't be worried what I say. Anyone who's worried about a Muslim saying that you are in heaven or hell, they believe in Islam and in Jannah and Jahannam. That's why. Deep down, low key, they believe in that. Why are you worried about what I believe? Whether you are going to heaven or hell, I believe. If, if a person of a different faith says, but why do you say we are going to hell? Do you believe in my faith? You actually do. That's why you are worried what I say. Are you following what I'm saying? My brothers and sisters, look at how powerful the message is. People don't realize they are worried about their own place where they are going. They are listening carefully to what is being said. Adam alayhi salam, as soon as he ate from that tree, Immediately he says, oh, what I did was bad. What I did was wrong. This is what Allah wants from all of us. Allah says, don't commit sin. But if you fall in it because you are a human being, immediately say, oh Allah, what I did was bad. رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Oh, our Lord. We wronged ourselves. What we did was bad. What we did was bad. And if you don't forgive us, and if you don't have mercy on us, we will be the losers. Allah says, we forgive you. Oh, Adam, forgive you. Now go on to the earth, and you will actually live there. We will continue to send your progeny. Reminders. What are those reminders? The echo of the same message of enlightenment. What is it? To worship Allah alone. And we will change from time to time what is known as rules and regulations of the shara. But we will never ever change the belief and the aqidah. All the prophets, they believe, they came to their people to tell them, worship Allah alone. We believe in the last day of accounts. 
We believe in the resurrection. We believe in if there were previous prophets, the previous prophets, the previous books, and so on. What do we say? Amantu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wal yawmil akhir wal qadri khayrihi wa sharrihi min Allah wal ba'ath ba'd al maut. We believe in all of those six elements of Iman. All the prophets came with the same. But how they prayed was a little bit different from one to the other. But who did they pray to? Only Allah. What was halal, haram, sometimes it changed with the changing of time. We follow the final shara. Haram, haram. Pork, no. Alcohol, no. Something that is not permissible because it's not been slaughtered in a proper way, no. Etc. We ask Allah to grant us goodness. So my brothers and sisters, the uncle was asking me the question that I told you. When I finished to tell him, have hope in the mercy of Allah, think good about Allah. Don't think bad. Don't think he's going to destroy me. He's going to punish me. He didn't accept my tawbah. He didn't know. Don't insult Allah. Allah says, oh, son of Adam, I will treat you the way you perceive me. So perceive Allah to be someone good and kind. Are you trying? Yes, you are. Then Alhamdulillah, you are trying. But when you are not trying, you ought to be worried. Because as much as old age and gray hair is an nadir, Allah says, we sent you the warner. We told you, we were showing you that you are coming closer to us. Many people die before that time. Do you not agree? How many young people suddenly heart attack dead? Suddenly motor vehicle accident dead? Something else happened dead. What happened to them? The nadir was not really there in that sense. But Allah sent nadir in another way. So this is why we say, my brothers, my sisters, be very possessive over your deen and be happy you are a believer. No need to be shy. Everyone who is on the straight path will face some form of challenge. When you don't want to do things that are connected to whims and fancies, people will tell you, ah, don't be too hard. You don't want to come to the club with us. This guy is being too hard. It's okay. I don't need to come to the club. What will you do? Wallahi, I will stand in Salatul Tahajjud rather than go to the club. Wallahi, yes, fun is permissible in Islam for as long as it is clean. I can go and enjoy my rally motor vehicle. I will race. I will do my motorbike. I will go and fish. I will go and run. I will go and do horse riding. I will go and do whatever. There's so many different ways of doing things. So many sports activities. They are permissible. For as long as you don't allow them to overtake your prayers and your duties unto Allah. You can be a footballer. You can be a cricketer. You can be so-so. For as long as they don't make you compromise your duty unto Allah. It's okay. But the minute that fun becomes fun that is displeasing to Allah it's not fun anymore and it's not even funny it becomes that which might result in your destruction people say come on we're just having fun they call it social 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 what social drinking have you heard that before he say do you drink he says ah, only socially what do you mean only socially just say yes astaghfirullah social do you smoke ah social do you do weed? He says, ah, it's okay. We have a plantation at home. Astaghfirullah, what did you just say? You have a what at home? They say, no, we need it fresh. What do you mean fresh? La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. The world is changing. If it, if it is legalized in some nations, it doesn't mean it's legalized in Islam. Alcohol is legal in so many nations. Does it mean it's legal in Islam? No. So people say, but it's legal. What is legal? They say, but it's legal. Cannabis. I say, cannabis legal or not legal in the nation? In Islam, it's not permissible. May Allah Almighty grant us strength. Your body is an amana. When you die, you have to give it back to Allah. Give it back in a good way. Keep it nicely. Keep it properly. And Allah will grant you ease. I know my time is up. But I tell you, I don't feel like leaving this position. Again, because I see so many handsome faces here, just looking at me, smiling and happy. Wallahi, I'm equally happy. I see all the way as I was walking in, I would love to greet everyone. But you know, there are two things about it. It's not humanly possible. And secondly, it doesn't mean that if you touch my hand, you are going to go to Jannah. No, no, no. Doesn't mean that. Doesn't mean.
So we love each other for the sake of Allah. We will protect each other. We will serve each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come together and we will spread goodness and we will really try our best to be the best of human beings, worshipping Allah alone, following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu so that the echoes of enlightenment can beam even through our efforts. I spoke a little bit about Adam alayhi salam today. As the days continue, I want to draw on other prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how the echo continued through the generations and for us to see it was all the same. May Allah Almighty bless you all. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له هو رب العالمين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله وخيرته من خلقه صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى الآل والصحب الكرام أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه إلى الله ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون فإن الكيس من دان نفسه وعمل لما بعد الموت والعاجز من أتبع نفسه هواها وتمنى على الله قال الله عز وجل ولقد بعثنا في كل أمة رسولا أن اعبدوا الله واجتنبوا الطاغوت 
فمنهم من هدى الله ومنهم من حقت عليه الضلالة وقال الله عز وجل وما أرسلنا من رسول وما أرسلنا من قبلك من رسول إلا نوحي إليه أنه لا إله إلا أنا فاعبدون وقال الله عز وجل فاعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله واستغفر لذنبك وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام بني الإسلام على خمس شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله وأني رسول الله وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة وصوم رمضان وحج البيت لمن استطاع إليه سبيلا فبارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن والسنة ونفعني وإياكم بما فيهما من الآيات والحكمة أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم اتباعه اللهم أرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم ادفع عنا الغلاء والوباء والربا والزنا والزلازل والمحن وسوء الفتن ما ظهر منها وما بطن اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من البرص والجنون والجذام ومن سيء الأسقام اللهم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما يا شافي اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين يا أرحم الراحمين ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر وأكبر اقيموا الصلاه يرحمكم الله عز وجل